Hey guys, everyone is talking about this uh, chat GPT tool, uh, how useful it can be in many areas of life or how it's going to change a lot, many things. If you're not familiar with chat GPT, it's uh, an artificial intelligence software. Software is like a chat where you can ask many things and it will answer with a very good uh, accuracy. I mean, it's pretty reliable, not 100%, but it can give you many interesting answers compared to previous similar softwares. So I was uh, analyzing this chat GPT a little. Uh, I don't know if you remember, I'm an engineer. I studied telecommunications and I like all this kind of stuff. And also I have been studying a lot web development recently. And well, I, I like this kind of things of technology and so. So I was thinking, well, how much can chat GPT help us? We chess players to improve or to train or to answer questions or uh, maybe as a chess coach. So I was thinking about that. And in this video, we're going to find it out. So I started my conversation and I said, hi, it said, hello, how can I help you today? And then I said, I'm a chess player. And it said, it's great to meet you, uh, to meet a chess player. Chess is a popular board game that has been enjoyed by people around the world for centuries. And it's a, it's a game of strategy, skill and mental endurance, etc. And then I said, well, um, at the end, it says, do you have any specific questions about chess that I can help with? And I said, well, yes, I blundered too much in my games. How can I improve? Okay, and this is where things start to get interesting. It said, blunders can be a common occurrence in chess, even for experienced players. Here are a few tips that may help you improve and reduce the number of blunders you make. So it said, practice regularly. The more you play, the more familiar you will become with chess. Analyze your games. After each game, take some time to review the mistakes you made and try to understand why you made them. All this is making a lot of sense, of course. Study tactics. Improving your tactical skills can help you spot opportunities and threats on the board. Of course, if you see more tactics, you can uh, take advantage of your opponent's mistakes much more. And at the same time, you won't miss uh, things or so many things. So tactics is going to help a lot. And then he said, work on your end game. A strong end game is important because it allows you to convert a winning position into a win. And then said, pay attention to your time management. Time pressure can cause players to make mistakes. So it's important to manage your time effectively during a game. So yeah, all these things are actually helping chess player to reduce the number of blunders. So I think it's a very good answer. Uh, what we got here for uh, blunders. And at the end, he said, I hope these tips are helpful. If you have any specific questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, well, I have time management problems, I said, which is true. I do have time management problems in, in my games. In, as a professional player, I have been uh, struggling with this, with time management. So let's see the answer. It said, time management can be a challenge in chess, especially in tournament games where you have a limited amount of time to make all of your moves. Here are a few tips that my, that may help help you improve your time management skills. So use HS clock. Well, in general, we all use a HS clock. Uh, establish a routine. Developing a consistent routine can help you save time during the game. For example, you might always start by reviewing your opponent's previous move and then deciding on your own plan before looking at a candidate, a candidate move. Okay. Okay. Avoid uh, distractions. Well, of course, in general, this is good. And plan ahead. Thinking ahead and making a plan for your next moves can help you save time during the game. And also take breaks. It's important to take a break to take breaks between games to rest and recharge. Well, uh, here this question about the time management thing, I think is interesting, but it's, I don't think it's as good as the previous one uh, with blunders. Because the thing is that um, it didn't say, for example, use your opponent's time, which is a very important tip for for time management, or don't think more than, I don't know, 10 minutes in one move in a tournament game, for example, or things like that. Uh, but in general, there are good tips, but I don't think they are as good as they could have been. And I asked another question, a little more specific, and I said, which is a good opening for beginners with white? And then it said, well, there are many good openings for beginners with white, and the best choice will depend on your personal preference, of course, and the style. Here are a few options that are popular among chess players. Italian game, of course, 
and it says a 45, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop c4. Ruy Lopez, perfect. And it says the moves there, French defense, e46, but French is with black, so I was asking about white, so it said uh, French with black, but okay. And then king's pawn open, king's pawn is actually okay. Uh, it's another uh, playable opening for beginners, so yeah, okay, it's fine. It's important to keep in mind that there is no best opening for all players, and the best choice for you will depend on your personal preferences and style of play. As you become more familiar with chess, you may want to try out different openings and see which ones work best for you. Okay, yeah, this is true. I mean, this is very clear. Well, I asked another question here, very specific, and uh, I w I'm actually crying chat GPT here. I said, I want to improve my rating in 100 points. What can I do? And then, well, it said, uh, can be a significant challenge, but it's possible with dedication and hard work. And this is very true, very real. Uh, here there are a few tips that may help. Uh, practice regularly, of course, analyze your games, and this is something we already saw earlier. Study tactics, also, I think it is something we already saw. Work on your end game, we saw it. Time management, and play against stronger opponents. And this is new and also very interesting. So yeah, uh, play against stronger opponents, that's true. It, it can help a lot. I mean, you're facing better players, you're definitely learning things, you're getting skills, and uh, you're watching a better player with more experience how he plays, how he faces situations during the game. So definitely playing against a stronger opponent is a good uh, tip here in this area of uh, improving a little, like 100 points. Yeah, okay, interesting. At the end it says, it's important to keep in mind that improving your rating will take time and effort, and you may need to be patient. However, dedication and work uh, will help you make progress and reach your goal of improving your rating by 100 points. Okay, makes sense. Okay, in general it's a good answer. Uh, it's not like a human answer, maybe, totally human, but I think it is better than the previous one for the time management. Well, here I continued making even more specific questions, and I, look at this. I said, I don't like sharp positions. Should I play King's Gambit? And then I said, answer yes or no. So I wanted a yes or, or no answer. And then it didn't give me a yes or no answer. It gave me a very long answer here. But in general, I think it's a good answer. So let's see. It's not. Uh, advisable to play the King's Gambit if you do not like sharp positions. This is important. So it knows that King's Gambit, it relates King's Gambit with sharp, complicated tactic positions. It, know, it knows what it's saying and uh, it's not advisable. The, King Gam the King's Gambit is very aggressive opening, involves sacrificing a pawn in order to gain an advantage. It often is sharp tactical positions where both players have to be alert and make precise moves in order to maintain their advantage. If you prefer more positional, slow-paced games, the King's Gambit may not be the best choice for you. So yeah, this is good. I mean, this is good. Uh, this is what I wanted. Uh, it, it gave you a good tip about uh, your decision whether playing or not King's Gambit being a, a positional or not liking sharp positions. Okay. Uh, also, instead, you may want to consider openings that are more solid, and it gives you some examples like Queen's Gambit, Rui Lopez, and Grunfeld uh, defense. Okay. Yeah, of course, a, a King's Gambit is with white. And, for example, Queen's Gambit is with white, Rui Lopez is with white, but Grunfeld is with black. So, yeah, it's not totally making sense, but it's making some sense. Um, well, I asked another question here, and I said, well, I'm good at endgames. What opening should I play? And then it said, well, uh, if you're good at endgames, you may want to consider openings that tend to lead to endgames. Some examples of these types of openings include Queen's Gambit, Rui Lopez, and Grunfeld Defense. And here there's a problem with Grunfeld because Grunfeld is both in the tactical uh, tip and also in the endgame tip. So this is not totally clear, I think. It's a little confusing. But with the R2 uh, openings, it's very clear. Queen's Gambit and Rui Lopez are more uh, at a slower uh, openings, so yeah, it, it makes sense to, if you're good at endgames, to get into something like that. Of course, a lot of things can happen in the middle game, so it's not so easy, but also the question is a little tricky. I mean, it's not it's not so clear, it's not so easy to play an opening and say, well, from this opening I'm getting into the endgame, so uh, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, it gives you some ideas about those openings and how it's important to keep a small advantage and and those things 
But yeah, in general, I think it's an interesting answer. Um, I asked another question here. I said, I'm very good calculating moves ahead. Which opening should I play? If you're good at calculating moves ahead, you may want to consider openings that tend to lead more to more tactical sharp positions. Okay, that's true. Some examples of these types of openings include Sicilian, Grunfeld again, and King's Gambit. So Sicilian is good, and King's Gambit is also very good. Uh, Grunfeld, eh, it's, it depends on the line, I could say, but it's interesting that it's saying Grunfeld all the time. Well, these openings often involve a lot of peace activity and can lead to complex tactical positions where you will have the opportunity to use your calculation skill. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that no opening guarantees a certain type of position, and you will need to be prepared to play a variety of different positions regardless of the opening uses. Okay, yeah, this is very true. Okay, uh, it's so important to note that will. It's also important to note that while calculation skills are certainly an important aspect of chess, they are not the only factor that determines success. All important skills include tactics, strategy, and technique, time management, and others. Therefore, it's important to work on all of these areas in order to become a well-rounded player. Again, uh, it's an important idea, this last one to finish the, the answer. Well, another interesting question here. Is king and queen versus king and rook winning? It's generally considered, generally considered to be winning for the player with the king and queen to have a winning advantage over the player uh, with the king and rook, as long as both players are playing optimally. And then, well, it explains a lot of things over there, but yeah, it understands, this, uh, it understands that in general it's winning for uh, the player with the, queen, with the queen. So yeah, it's very good. And um, the ultimately the outcome of a game will depend on the specific position and the skill level of the players. It's important to be aware of the general principles of the end game and to try to play as accurately as possible in order to maximize your chances of winning. Yeah. Okay. Well, finally, I asked, do you want to be my chess coach? And uh, there was an error over there, but I don't think it's an error uh, specifically of the answer. It's not like uh, it broke or anything. I think it's more like there was a, a problem with internet, and that's because uh, that's the reason why we had this uh, mistake. Also, something interesting about ChatGPT is that it takes the context of the question. I mean, it it keeps in mind the the previous questions, in the the whole conversation. So when you're asking about something, uh, it keeps in mind the the topic. It knows what you are talking about. It keeps in mind the context of the conversation. So that's also something interesting that we should highlight. Well, um, in general, as you can see, it's very interesting. It can be helpful. It can, uh, I could say, it can help a lot in many cases. Uh, also, it's not 100% ac accurate, we, we could say. But yeah, in many cases, it can help and give interesting answers and helpful answers, uh, this uh, chat GPT. Also, I mean, I was just asking some questions over there, but I guess there are many other things that we can do with chat GPT as chess players. So yeah, this is just the beginning. Um, I guess there will be other ideas over there and there are other things that we can do. By now, uh, we can say that, of course, it's, it's not going to replace a, a human chess coach or chess trainer or not even chess tips by humans, but it can definitely help a lot. Uh, it can be helpful in, in many situations where you have some doubts. So tell me, have you tried Chat GPT or will you try it now that you saw what it is? Uh, do you think it can help you? on chess. So let me know your opinion. Uh, as always, uh, like, subscribe, and see you in the next.